Hey everybody, Trolley Foley here, the troll you can trust, back with the Walking Dead roast map video. Featuring Telltale Games, Clementine done running. Along with her bringing in her new specialist skill, Vitality. Clementine making her appearance into the six star scene, I had a feeling a red tank survivor with a new defensive skill was coming as soon as we recently had the blue Conrad released. So if you ended up getting him, you are in good shape for now and in the future, I believe. If you are interested, in a red or ranged only team, then Clementine can fit anywhere in your roster. Clementine is showing the world she can survive on her own with her new specialist skill, Vitality. At the start of each turn, Clementine will get health based on the amount of unspent adrenaline rush she has. To my understanding, unspent adrenaline rush means it's based on how much AP you have. <laughs> If you have unspent money, then you still own that money, and you can't really gauge spent Adrenaline Rush for a character based on something that happens at the beginning of a character's turn. <laughs> so after a barrage of damage, she can heal some of that damage back based on how much AP she has. If you run a bonus health team with her, she can be very useful, especially if she gets hit by a bunch of damage and then gets bonus health to buy her enough time to self-heal it back up, granted you also put crowd control to help your team as well. She also adds a little bit of a counter to some of those bleed and burn comps, as she will get healed at the start of her turn, and then at the end of the turn, the bleed and burns, then proc. Her adrenaline rush is not to be taken lightly, as it will MC shatter pants all over your team, and you may not be able to recover from it. If you don't prep any type of focus-related skill, Prior. If you normally go up against a range or red only teams, you would, if I had to guess, probably would expect stun and impair based weapons and confuse for the occasional Michonne. But Taunt. I am not sure too many people are prepared for this, as when she pops her adrenaline rush off and taunts too, there is a better chance out of those two turns she will stun somebody. Bonus health from her adrenaline rush is always a good thing to have when running stun and impair weapons as they can have a great impact before the enemy even starts hitting away at your actual health bar, which matters. I see the pain split as, in case she taunts two blues with double attack weapons, it lowers the chance of getting pooped on. Her active is Taunt and AP Gain. She will taunt one enemy for two turns, which is half of her CC that comes from her Adrenaline Rush. The double effect from active skill is nice nowadays and allows to create an opening versus certain enemy team comps. Such as if you don't have a disarm or your disarm just isn't critting at all during the fight, the enemy is jam-packed full of special defense weapon mods such as stun and impair when being attacked. Basically, if you have no current move to make, that can give you certainty to come out on top for that turn. Such as you don't want to risk basic attacking with Clem to get herself stunned versus a red or impaired versus a blue. Or you can use her active to get 19 AP, which is basically one basic attack with no AP gain on her weapon. So if you don't put AP when attacking on her weapon, then I would be using her active whenever possible. Because as soon as you taunt somebody, they attack her and then they can be stunned, allowing you to bypass any special weapon mods, giving you an opening to smash the other team. She comes with a god tier weapon with 30% defense, medium bonus to AP, and a better chance to stun when being attacked. Oh yeah, you still have three more crafts to do. <laughs> so be prepared to enjoy this character, as I do see two main avenues with her weapon. You could go full tilt on her defense, giving you a 45% defense, and combine her with a defense and HP leader, allowing you to shove it right back up those blue attack teams. We would keep the medium bonus to AP when taking damage because let's say Clementine gets barrage turn one. Also, having a 45% defense weapon with a 40% HP and defense lead should create enough defense to prevent her from dying turn one. And the bonus AP when taking damage should be enough for her to pop an AR off for them trying to take her out. And if they failed to take her out, she will heal a little bit of HP back up with Vitality. Her stats, I feel, should be all focused on her defense. As being a red survivor, you have to be very careful with blue damage dealing survivors with double attack weapons. And of course, she is labeled as a tank, so putting anything in her offense probably wouldn't be the best route to take. Looking at the tank rolls for reds, we can see only the governor has taunts in his adrenaline rush, but only for one turn. If you have a red with a stun when being attacked, 
Haunt is a pretty nice feature to have. While Negative Attack and Confuse are given from the other red tanks, Confuse Resist combat mods are starting to slowly be gained by more and more people, making it show up more often due to something like, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe Shiva? The negative attack can be removed, and the enemy survivors can start pounding away at your team. Unless they prepare to focus, you will be able to prevent adrenaline rushes and possibly any damage if your stun gun procs. If we take a look at our blue tank survivors, Abraham and Garrett both have taunt, but Impair comes up short for stun. Although Impair is nice when resistances are not as abundant to it. Let's jump into the team comp section where we will also show weapon modifications and combat mods. First defense team we have here is an Erica lead and we will be using this as a timeout team. There is no kill potential with this team and seeing as blue is our kryptonite and they wield double attack blue weapons with a free to play Tyrese for decaps we take full fledged defense approach. Magna should buy you the first turn, allowing you to not worry too much about AP when attacking, giving you the ability to stack her with defense for when Magna is shut down. We have Command Sadiq to allow a one turn early AR for our Erica, Clem, and Mackenzie. If anything, give Mackenzie the AP when attacking and have her pop her Adrenaline Rush off first, as she will do more wonders with healing and removing any crowd control, giving your opponent an oh f moment. Any damage Clem may have taken throughout this process will be healed up with her specialist skill too, which is a nice defensive feature combined with all the other skill sets with this team. If I had this team, I would probably put all three crafts into her defense to make sure a double attack weapon proc hits as less as possible. And by doing this, we'll make a double attack, a double chance of procking her weapon stun. If Clem survives a barrage, as double attack weapons have no crowd control, she will be able to fire back her AR with the AP when taking damage weapon mod. Combat mods are pure defensive, baby. Defense set mainly due to having her capabilities to getting a 45% defense weapon and a 40% defense leader is just screaming, put defense combat mods on me and make it a defense set. <laughs> We go defense versus blue as they will apply the most pressure towards us. Stun resist, so even if she happens to be impaired, she can use her active, and if she is confused, she will still gain AP. So not a complete loss here. But we bring Mackenzie to make sure we can deal with all that stupid crowd control to allow Clementine to have free reign on her enemies. Graze just for the double attack and end it all with the health combat mod for our wild card slot. Our first attack team with Clementine we will use her to help slaughter some melee tunes. Granted, taunting green survivors with stun weapons may not be in our best interest, as that is pretty much the roll of a dice. But that is the reason two out of our three damage dealers here are red. Two of them are red mainly to eliminate the greens from the picture to allow Clementina to taunt any yellows to put it up their pooper and stun them. Lewis gives you turn two pressure as he can use his adrenaline rush in which you can kill one or two greens, slowly removing any sort of stun weapons from the picture early. Turn three, you have Madison, Clementine, and Shiva at your disposal to bleed, taunt, confuse, burst damage them down. You have options here, which is the goal you want, as that lets you know you are making very flexible and synergetic teams. In case Clementine does get some heavy focus, her vitality specialist skill will come in handy when you are attacking as there are as there may be times you will be stunned and impaired, and your last hope of surviving is either from another teammate or her specialist skill, Vitality. For weapon, we change it up slightly from before, as here we will craft two in her defense, giving it 40% defense and an AP when attacking, as I feel this will benefit her more and your team more with the bonus HP and pain split, as we don't have blues on this team. So if we were to face an all melee team, the no trait disadvantages are towards us. Her choice of combat mods here is the same as the defensive team in terms of the HP, defense mod, and the combat mod set being defense. The two changes here for her on attack is we don't need to have defense versus blue, as we're going to be going after melee teams with the Madison leader. An attack versus green, even though her attack stat is not that high, but she will still have the trade advantage, so let's put out as much pressure as we can on offense. 
Also, instead of Graze, let's run an AP down as we won't be hit by trait disadvantages so we can expand our team utility. Now let's move on to the second defense team. The second defense team is a crowd control based timeout team with a minor kill potential. The kill potential comes from the large amounts of Confuse and Taunts to prevent your enemy from using any type of healing adrenaline rushes. Bonus HP and high defense buffs to allow our stun and impair weapons to last longer, thus making the fight last longer for a timeout. This team does give you all crowd control, that being Confuse, Stun, Impair, and Taunt. So when the enemy hits you, they will have to be very careful on who they use as you cannot prevent all crowd control effects. You pretty much, for the grand part of it all, only get two forms of crowd control prevention per survivor. And this usually comes from the combat mods. If the enemy fails to kill anybody or neutralize on turn one, expect a free adrenaline rush in your favor. And to be honest, any one of these people, I would not want adrenaline rushing turn one against me as I don't want to be confused or taunted or have my first kill target that will unravel your team, get full HP and have 100% defense, making it almost impossible to remove that survivor from the match on that turn. The weapon of choice will be two crafts into the defense and replace the AP when taking damage with one HP craft. My two reasons behind this are, we don't have a leader with an HP lead, and we have a source of AP generation from Lee's leadership skill for when we take damage. So that leaves us with potential for turn one AR if they fail to kill or impair or stun on their attack turn one. We also have Harlan who is a 58 Adrenaline Rush Survivor who with without a doubt will be commanded turn two, unless crowd controlled. And if we build our team tanky enough so that no one dies, when it is our second turn, then Harlan will heal all that HP back up and 100% defensing them, telling you to find someone else to pick on. If you happen to impair or stun anyone during the first two turns, then the barrage of impairs, confuses, taunts, bonus HP, defense buffs, and pain splits will commence with this attack team. Combat mods we use for our first defense team will be the exact same here. Need the health in defense even more as we lack a health leadership skill. Stun resist so Klim can at least use her active to cause disruption to the enemy. Graze for the double attack blues, especially with the double attack adrenaline rushes. Here is the last attack team, which will be mainly focused on free to play as you just got lucky and pulled Clementine. So let's take a look at this. If you happen to pull for Clem as someone who has a mainly free to play roster, we can take this approach for an attack team. Mirabelle leader as we are on the offensive. So we will be bringing some damage dealers which have high HP and attack base stats. So we choose Mirabelle for this reason on scaling. We bring in Wander for heavy green red comps and we'll have Mirabelle, Clementine and Dwight Adrenaline Rush after the Wander's Adrenaline Rush as the Wander will lower defenses, making quick work of greens and reds. Once the greens are down, Clementine can easily control the yellows with her Adrenaline Rush or active skill to stun them with her weapon mod, allowing you to bypass any absolute defense weapon. Weapon of choice will be two in defense and one for AP when attacking. We don't have a 58 Adrenaline Rush Survivor here as there isn't a 58 AR free to play damage dealer yet. So 66 is the best we can do. Since we don't have a 58 Adrenaline Rush Survivor, we have three people with crowd control actives such as Clem's Taunt, Dwight's Impair, and Sadiq's Confuse for turn two options to disrupt the enemy team, allowing for damage control and turn three all over the enemy team. Combat mods here will be the same as the first attack team with our HP defense, but with a health set combat mods, especially since we have a Mirabelle leader and wander lowering defenses. Combat mods here will be the same as the first attack team with our HP defense, but instead of a defense set, we're gonna go with a health set. Since we run a Mirabelle leader and we bring Wander to lower defenses, we will then bring an attack first screen combat mod to apply even more pressure. The AP down combat mod, as there is a good chance your team will impair and stun the enemy. So let's make sure every impair and stunned enemy suffers from zero AP syndrome. There you have it, everybody. That is a survivor spotlight of Clementine's done running. Are you all going to pull for? Do you see any uses for her in your roster? If so, let the team comps rip in the comment section down below. 
Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video and made you laugh before you do anything positive, please give a nice call right here. Drop that like and subscribe button. And make sure you leave a comment down below. It supports greatly. Appreciate it. And other than that, I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.